Welcome back to an episode of Hot Takes with Carrie and Keelan. This is episode 15 and I am Carrie Ray Davis with Carrie Sells the City. And I'm Keelan Harvey with the Harvey Home Team. So Keelan, it sounds like there's been a little bit of a shift this week with rates. Would you like to fill us in on what you've been seeing? Yeah, you know, since we do these weekly, I think it's good because there's data and information that comes out and I run the risk of boring everybody to death. <laughs> I'm a, I'm I mean, a more... stuff you and I talk about every day. So for the layman out there, it might not be as easy. <laughs> yeah, I speak mortgage and sometimes it can come out and people just glaze over when to me, like these are little exciting details and facts. So what I'll probably do is more of a 30,000 foot view, maybe okay maybe just hit these a little bit and, and tell you why things are happening. Long story short, it was a bad, yeah, it was definitely a bad week for rates. Nothing we're con concerned about really. I mean, it's been level. There have been ups and downs. And we said early, early on, we're going to have ups. We're going to have downs. But overall, the trend is the same. The Fed is supposed to be reducing rates this year multiple times. We know rates are going to go down, but it's not just going to be a straight slope down. There's going to be ups and downs. But what I want to do is like a 30,000 foot view. These reports that come out, everybody has an expectation in the market of what's going to happen, but there's a lot of weight on all this data coming out and when it's going to happen and when is the Fed going to reduce rates. And so within this anticipation, I'm seeing that like, you know, there's a big response to these little data points. And um, what it comes down to, the bigger view of that mm -hmm. is it's when the economy is doing great, interest rates go higher, right? And mortgage rates are based on inflationary, uh, on inflation. So on inflationary reports, you know, the Fed's goal is when the economy is doing well, the money's moving fast, inflation is high, they increase the Fed fund rate to hedge inflation to slow down the economy. So my point of saying that is when reports come out like a jobs report or a money report and an inflationary report, the market's going to react. If we see jobs are doing great, the Fed's like, oh, man, we're panicking, right? Um, or when they see inflation, they're like, oh, maybe we need to continue to increase the Fed fund rate. When if we look under the surface, what and when you're educated on this stuff, what you might see on the top is not really what we see below the hood. Does that make sense? Well, it means, you know, for people out there that don't deal with this on a daily basis, you need to have a professional in your corner to help explain it to you. And one thing I want to remind people when they're getting ready to purchase a home, that your situation is very specific to you. So you could have a much better rate than the neighbor next door, depending on what you've got to deal with regarding your finances and your credit score and all of these things. So even though it might sound a little scary, you want to be able to talk with Keelan about what it looks like for you personally. Well, more so, that's the difference between a certified mortgage advisor and somebody that doesn't know what they're talking about when it comes to the market and rates and what to do. Because it's not just about a transaction. It's about strategizing, managing debt for your life. Right. So, you know, you might have, you know, and if you watch the media, it's all, we're all going to, the world's going to explode and the, <laughs> you know, you it's know, all crashing. Right. <laughs> right. So it's like, you got to be very careful on what advice you're, fo you're following because they're, it's all doom and gloom. Right. Right. Well, so, and I just want to remind people like, this is kind of like riding a wave. Like yeah. interest rates, like you mentioned, they're going to go up, they're going to come down. It's never just a steady stream. I mean, there's always going to be a little turbulence, a little bit of a, a movement. And so, you know, trying to time the market, quote unquote, might not always work with you. You might just want to make sure that you're ready to make a move when you see things are beneficial for you. Absolutely. And I mean, little things, I'll give you a couple examples this week and I'll just glaze over it because I don't want people to fall asleep on me here. <laughs> but like, for example, like the BLS jobs report came out this week. It's a jobs right. report. It exceeded expectations. So they're going, oh man, what the heck happened? You know, jobs are going bonkers. But again, you look under the hood and uh, and weekly earnings are actually way down and they're all part-time jobs, which doesn't necessarily indicate that the economy is doing better because right. weekly earnings are down. But if you just took it at the uh, at the face value, and I mean, half the whole deal about that is people are struggling trying to make ends meet. So they're getting second jobs and things at right. this point. So once you yeah. like on the surface, 325,000 new jobs, holy moly, things are great. But like once you dive in a little bit deeper, it's like, oh, wait, there's some cracks. Right? right underneath the surface 
And the biggest payroll provider in the country, ADP, came out and they had 150,000 expectation and they got 107. And I love ADP because it's hard data. This is not right. like, let's turn some knobs. Right. You, you know? mentioned and, them before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah this is like, ones. this is what it is, right? right? Like hard facts and data. Jobs are down. Earnings are down. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. it's really important you kind of look. And then, inflationary reports CPI came out, PPE. I won't go nuts on these. But the point is, they came out slightly higher than expectations. I mean, year over year, these are down actually. But even the indication and, and the PPI is producer price index, CPI is consumer price index. This just means the cost of goods. That's yeah. all that is. You know, the cost of goods was slightly higher. When I say slightly higher, like 0. 0.3, when they expected 0. 0.1, like these okay. aren't crazy numbers. But even these little, little things, you know, and, and they are very minute and what changed them, like insurance was up. Because mm. premiums, I don't know about you guys, but insurance ain't getting cheaper. <laughs> you know? No, like, it's not. <laughs> no. Lodging away, a lodging away from home and Airbnbs, that was another main culprit. Like, okay. you know, people are still doing that and going on vacations. But these are like, and then on the, the PPI, it was a uh, hospital uh, outpatient care services, portfolio management, like financial advisory, legal services were up. So just these little like subcategories. Interesting. Yeah, it's not yeah. like, it, but it doesn't give us like, oh, this is what the economy's doing. Sure. It just so tells you what, where, where people are moving their money from and to, to and from, really. Yeah, it's <laughs> just telling us these little shifts in the market and things that are happening. But when you, you see it on the media, it's like, we're down 60 basis points. Well, we just gained 30 of those. And it's just the market, you know, the bond market not responding well to some <laughs> news. And But it doesn't change anything. The point is, I don't want anyone to panic. Uh, and we can have up. bad weeks. We've had several in the past. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I really, if you look back from December 15th, it's just not a lot of news, uh, some good, some bad, but not a ton has changed. You wouldn't change your mind on whether you should buy or not buy right. a home right now. I mean, we're talking, uh, micro things, not a huge difference in rates. We're talking about like high sixes to maybe seven or, okay six and a half to maybe high sixes like that's not going to be like a never mind we're not buying a house type decision right, right? so uh, let me ask let yeah. me interject really here and ask a question yeah. because when we're when we are calculating mortgages for our clients yeah how much what is what i should know this but i you need to ask you a lot but when you go up like fifty thousand dollars per month or in purchase price, how much per month does that add to your mortgage? Do you, what's that formula again? For every 10,000, it's $50 a month. Okay. Right? Okay. So for every 10,000, it's $50 a month in purchase price, by the okay. way. And that's rough. Call it 40 to 70, depending on okay. your purchase price. Okay. But for every 10,000, so that would be $500 a month, $700 a month. Okay. Uh, okay. To answer your question. But the point is, I hope my math's right there. But the, <laughs> We're not, we're not mathematicians. I'm not. Yeah, mathematicians. I have a calculator. It's like spell check. It makes you I'm a language person. Time. Yeah, because it's like you just don't use it. But the point is, um, yeah, for every 10,000, I know it's between like 50, 60, 70 bucks a month. Okay. So it's a great way to calculate in your brain, right. you know, when you're looking at purchase prices. And never believe calculators. Uh, the <laughs> online calculators, no offense to anybody, are oh. trash. You're like yeah. talking about online calculators from the different like internet or like web platforms. Yeah. Like if you go on the web platforms and you try to estimate a payment and the ones that are notorious are like the mortgage insurance is way off. Okay. Taxes way off. And Another reason cool. why you need somebody that's a professional in your corner to make sure that you're getting accurate numbers. Yeah. And the reality is it's usually lower than what you see online. They actually estimate those things. I don't know where they get it from. They're just tend to always be high. And when we talk to customers, they're like, oh my gosh, that's way better than Woo! I thought. I'm like, yeah, that's good. I've, I've played with quite a few of them. You're a hero. Like, oh. <laughs> like, yeah, like these are garbage. So, um, Well, yeah. one thing that we touched on a little earlier that I want to ask about was um, you were mentioning just, you know, with the economy and, you know, it seems like there's a lot of people out there that are really, you know, working hard to get by. And you were mentioning something about the advanced payment systems. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're, yeah. Um, I Want remember. To hit on yeah. That. yeah, yeah, you're talking about buy now, uh, pay later. Pay later, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, we've hit record highs on credit card debt. 
and we've hit record lows on savings. We saw those couple spikes, if you look, where they had those COVID, um, you know, they, I forgot what you want to call them. Those yeah, stipends, stipends. right? They give you some money, yeah, right? Yeah, and then the you stimulus. see it drop off dramatically. We saw, you know, savings go way down and then people dipping in their credit card. Credit card debt's huge right now. And, but it's been like really persistent. Like we're trying to figure out like, you know, some of these reports for consumer spending coming out and people are still spending money. And I know we, I mean, it's rough. Everything's so expensive. I feel bad for so yeah. many people. I don't know how much money you have to make to make ends meet out there. But I can tell you what, we all feel it. If we're being honest, it's crazy. Groceries. It's, I don't I don't think I've talked to anybody that has not been touched by this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it is, it is really hard living for all of us right now. Mm -hmm. And this consumer spending keeps kicking. And then we had a report that came out and it kind of explains it a little bit. Buy now, pay later. You know when you like want to go get a mattress and you walk in the store and you're like, they're like, oh, you can buy it now and we'll give you an installment plan for like however much. Just right. take the mattress home and you can figure out how to pay for it later, right? <laughs> go sleep on it. <laughs> yeah, insert whatever terms there are there. But that right. was up 34% of American adults used it last year, which is okay. a huge number. And 33% uh, missed a payment on that. So Which hurts. that's, that's a ding in your credit for sure. You don't yeah, want to do not, anything not, like that. Yeah. Not good. And, and what that tells us is, man, this economy is not good. And what we're fearful of is the fed waiting too long to do things. They left rates. They, they too long, but rates went down too quick and they left them there for too long. Mm -hmm. They raised them. They should have like, they should have raised them earlier. They didn't. And now mm -hmm. our fear is they're re leaving race, uh, rates, high for too long right and if they do that then we're not going to come in they keep talking about a soft landing i don't i mean we're all concerned about this soft landing because the economy does not appear to be as good as it does on the surface mm -hmm. and so i mean the expectations of that report that came out uh they were expecting one tenth of one percent it was eight tenths which is 800 percent higher than what they thought was going to happen I don't know about these reports. I swear they're cooking the books because at the end of the day, to take all politics out of it, it doesn't matter. It's just right. reports, you know, but, uh, you know, the point is, is I feel it. Hey, I'm sure you feel, we I all feel, feel it. it. Absolutely. Yeah, everybody feels it. Like there's no, like we are not flying with this economy and like the data and stuff coming out is so minute. It does not give us any, uh, all of us are not like, oh, the economy's going great. You know, it's not the case. Right. Well, and I wonder, you know, I know that the A mentioned that they weren't going to be raising interest rates in March when they meet, but maybe do you think if we have some of these reports that are consistently high, that they might go ahead and do that? Or do you think they'll hold off and kind of wait? Because one thing I know that you've said in the past is, you know, you've got to give every everything time to adjust, right? When you start making these changes and you keep making changes, you don't get a chance to have the rest and see what the results are. Do you think that they might go ahead and rate lower them again? I know you can't look into the crystal ball, like what's our, our famous, you know, saying, but I'm just curious what you think. Yeah, if it was up to me and every other expert that I, I find it hard to believe they don't know what's going on, right? I don't know what the motives are there, but it seems like they're holding on to this longer. And maybe because like when they know that the it does turn, it's going to go fast. So, right. you know, but if it was up to us, I would be saying we really need to look underneath the surface and they probably need to cut rates sooner. Right. Um, but these reports don't help us. That's why the bond market didn't respond well. And if we continue to get these reports, you know, uh, it's going to delay them reducing rates. And mm -hmm. he even said in March, like I said before, he's not going to cut rates. But uh, the next meeting is May 30th through April 1st. There's okay. still a very high percentage that they're going to do that. And half the problem is these not even voting Fed members are running around flapping their gums about, you know, we are we need to keep jacking rates up or we're not going to reduce them. And so, I mean, even their words affect the marketplace. So I feel like everybody's kind of like biting their nails and like holding on to every single word where they might be reacting, like overreacting in situations. 
Yeah, it's a very strange historical time right now because mm-hmm. like we we got to the highest rates we've had in decades. Like, so you know what I mean? Like these are monumental things that are happening and the market is really emotional about it, you know, and <laughs> and investors and things because these are big shifts. Yeah. You know, so I'll tell you one thing. My prediction hasn't changed. I mean, they're going to reduce rates. Rates are on the way down. It's impossible not to be down. They're running out of steam when it comes to this data and stuff that's coming out. Beneath the surface, uh, shelter costs makes up 43% of the CPI. I won't nerd out on that. But that's a delayed figure that will help us in the future. As time goes on, uh, what they think with housing is very different than what's actually happening. Mm-hmm. And that number is going to cross and meet itself. And next thing you know, you know, all things are going to align and it's going to be undeniable. Okay. Um, okay. And they're having a tough time now. They keep making adjustments. They keep changing reports. Like they keep like this BLS jobs report that came out. They've adjusted every one of them. They're going to adjust this one, too. So it's like the point is rates are going to go down. My thing hasn't changed. This is just little bumps in the road on the way down and right. I'm not concerned in the slightest. Well, and you just have to, like I said, it's just, you know, just ride the wave, you know, if don't get, too, don't get too attached to one thing or another, especially when it comes to your rate. Um, if, yeah. if it's the right time for you, it's the right time. One thing I can say is that I appreciate that there is more inventory coming out slowly. Um, I just did a quick search, you know, between yesterday and today for um, residential homes in King County, there were 223 new listings just in the last two days. Pierce County, only 109, and Snohomish, only 87. So oh, no. it is nice to see that there are actually things to send to my clients because there just hasn't been. But I am working on listings, so I do know, you know, springtime coming up here soon. Hopefully, you know, I won't be the only agent that's got things that are coming out. So people that are are looking for homes and that they just aren't seeing anything, just hold tight and just stay patient because eventually that beautiful property that you're looking for is going to come on the market. So make sure you're ready. <laughs> well, do you think, Carrie, that's because like I've seen activity pull up. Interest rates are still much lower than they were in October. Mm-hmm. I wonder, I'm assuming that's because people are realizing that they're, I mean, what, multiple offers so it's it's a good time. It's turned back to a seller's market now. So maybe that shift in seller's market, and we knew this was going to happen, has released some of that inventory. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that if you can find a home right now, jump on it. Um, mm-hmm. If it's not, you know, it's competitive. I know I've seen competitive um, offers for my own situations. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I believe with you that as soon as those interest rates come down, everybody that's kind of waiting and teetering and, and waiting to see what's going to happen, they're all going to jump in at the same time. And, you know, that might bode well for my sellers that are coming, you know, with these listings I'm working on, because hopefully there's going to be more than one buyer that are looking at these properties. So it just depends on which side of the coin you're on. I wish I had a property to sell right now with the multiple offers. Shoot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I've seen some crazy stuff already. And uh, so, you know, the market shifted sellers. So holler at your girl, Carrie Ray, get listed. That's right. You know? So awesome. Okay. Well, Keelan, I think this is great this week. You know, I don't think any news is bad news. I think it's always good to talk about what's happening so we can just let people know what we're seeing and that, you know, if they've got questions, they can go ahead and ask us. So if you out there have any questions about what Keelan and I are speaking about, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We're happy to chat with you over the phone, email. You can reach us at me personally, 206-330-6985. And you can get me at 206-321-4941. So, well, awesome. Okay, Keelan, well, I'm looking forward to um, chatting with you again next week and seeing what else we've got to talk about. Yeah, me too. Okay, take care. Yeah.